So we came in up Highway 80 to uh, the channel's Natural Area Preserve Public Access Point, which is on private property. This is somewhat unique here in that our access point is on private property. And the first three quarters of a mile is via a trail easement across two private properties. And we're about to step foot on the channel's Natural Area Preserve, which is delineated within the channel state forest. So from here on up, it's about two and a quarter miles. We're walking the old fire tower road. There's still a lot of work to be done here as far as, you know, sustainable trail management and public access management. My name's Claiborne Woodall. I'm the Southwest Regional Supervisor. I also serve as the program's fire manager in the western part of the state. We'll be talking about the Channels Natural Area Preserve in Washington and Russell counties. It's on the top of Clinch Mountain, just north of Abingdon. The Channels is very unique in its origin and the reasons for which it was dedicated as a state natural area preserve. Our hook in this as a natural area preserve was the rare geologic formation. So this was the primary driver of natural heritage interest at the channels was the geologic formation. It's 4,836 acre state forest. So the property is owned by the Virginia Department of Forestry. It's not owned by DCR. And within that 4,836 acre property, 721 acres was dedicated to state natural area preserve. Why 721 acres? It was the funding involved. So the channels had been privately owned for decades. It had been heavily logged, uh, heavily high graded. There were about 80 miles of mapped roads and skid trails. Compared to Buffalo Mountain, it's not as rich in the natural heritage resources as like we saw yesterday. So just kind of keep that in mind. However, the forest is definitely recovering. It's much more of an acidic forest than we saw yesterday. A lot of chestnut oak. We saw a lot of sour wood on the way up. Historically, there was a heavy American chestnut component here. And we'll see a little bit of it in a few locations on the way, but along the spur ridges coming down off the main ridge, there's a historic uh, yellow pine, pitch pine, shortleaf pine component that's really about to blink out. And um, there's been some conversation about restoration, fire management um, with the Department of Forestry at those locations, but uh, that work hasn't been done yet. The channels is right here. So we have a cluster of public access preserves in the southwest region, which is my region right here. The channels, number 53. This map slightly out of date with 65 preserves. We're now at 66. And we also have Pinnacle Natural Area Preserve in Cleveland Barrens on the Clinch River that have public access trails and facilities. So here's the map, sort of the context map here. The red is the Channel State Forest. And what's really cool about this map and the, the project as it came to fruition is the sort of landscape context of all these conservation lands on Clinch Mountain in the Ridge and Valley of Virginia. So right up here, that's the break toward the Appalachian Plateau. The, the coal fields of Virginia start right about there. You can see the change in topography. The Department of Wildlife Resources, formerly the Game Department in Virginia, has a 5,000 acre wildlife management area. Here we have a nearly 5,000 acre state forest and natural area preserve. Over here is the 25,000, 27,000 acre Clinch Mountain Wildlife Management Area. And then all this purple is Nature Conservancy conservation easements, mostly on former Stewart land and cattle property. And then there's some bluish, those are Virginia Outdoors Foundation easements. So in total, there's about 150,000 acres of matrix of conservation lands, which is really important for all sorts of wildlife habitat, corridors, and so forth. So getting back to the channel's delineation of why it was 721 acres, it was the funding. So th there was a, a regional effort, there was a development threat. We'll talk about this a little bit tomorrow. A private developer was gonna develop mountaintop chalets on, on the top of Clinch Mountain. It didn't get a change of zoning through the County Board of Supervisors, led to a real groundswell of interest in saving the channels quite a big grassroots movement, which motivated a lot of the local politicians to find ways to get it in uh, land conservation. The Nature Conservancy, private organization, they stepped in and bought the property in about 2004. They bought the property and basically sat on it until the state could figure out the funding to take it off of their hands. 
There was a Department of Forestry employee back in the 1950s and 60s who actually owned part of this property. And Department of Forestry had long eyed this area as a site for a state forest in Virginia. To, to date, they didn't have any state forests in Southwest Virginia. All the state forests were pretty much Upper Blue Ridge and then primarily Piedmont and Coastal Plain. Department of Forestry was very interested in this property. Local delegates, senators, grassroots lobbyists worked with the General Assembly. And in 2006, a General Assembly appropriation specific to this property, some funds were appropriated for purchase. It wasn't quite enough to buy the property. Natural Heritage Program pursued a grant with the Virginia Land Conservation Foundation, the VLCF, and our proportion of that amounted to 721 acres. So of the state forest, we got to carve out 721 acres. Again, a common thread with Buffalo Mountain, this site has, it still has, it's still there, we'll see it tomorrow. A fire tower, it was decommissioned in the early 1970s, the Middle Knob Fire Tower, which sits right on top or right adjacent to where these channels geologic formations are. There was a lot of interest in public access and how DCR was going to implement that. There was interest in you know, paving a road and putting in a big parking lot. And we refrained from going in those directions and kind of using some of the strategies that Rick talked about kept it somewhat arduous to reach the channel's destination. So it's a three mile hike up and back, um, but that still attracts a lot of people. So there's the Middle Knob Fire Tower and the associated fire tower watchman's cabin, which is no longer there, sitting on top of the Clinch Mountain sandstone. Beautiful views of the Ridge and Valley. This is why people are, why we were interested and why visitors go to the channels, are these crevices of Clinch Mountain sandstone. I've heard them referred to as like Appalachian slit rock canyons. There's really no feature like this, to my knowledge, in Virginia. We're gonna keep going slowly on into the next there's a number of these hubs and little passageways that connect to each hub. I call this hub number one. If you're not amenable to caving, this is like caving with a skylight. <laughs> so you're not in darkness, but it has that feel to it. So this is millions of years of weathering and erosion. You know, keep in mind, this wasn't the highest point on the landscape many millions of years ago, and then followed by further you know, fracturing and freeze thawing of subsequent ice ages and so forth. The forces at work that caused these formations. And you can see the signatures on some of the rock that indicate significant water movement through, this, through these rock features at some point in time. In 2007, it was dedicated to state natural area. Relatively few people even knew that that existed. I mean, I knew people who knew the fire tower was there. They took their Boy Scouts to the fire tower, but lo and behold, they never ventured down into these rocks. It was really fairly unknown to the local population. So we managed public access. It really wasn't an issue until actually the inertia of the word got out is the, is the beauty of this place. And then unbeknownst to us in 2014, the channels hit the front cover of the Virginia Tourism Corporation travel catalog. We didn't know what was going on the front cover, and then everybody came. But it really became, and still to this day, is very much a bucket list destination. I was up there yesterday, ran into people from Richmond, Atlanta, and Asheville. Most of our visitors are not local. Unlike our other natural area preserves in Southwest, which tend to kind of cater to the locals, this one's people travel far distances and get Airbnbs and so forth to visit this place. So we started to see the ramifications of that. In 2017, we really hit a trigger point of negative impacts. We had a, a rash of graffiti, some other negative impacts. Visitation was picking up beyond what our parking lot would accommodate. And we went in sort of reactive stewardship mode. I'll talk about here, our reactive stewardship season of 2018. And while I would prefer to talk about invasive species control or prescribed fire management, um, I'm here today to talk about our public access management at Channels. But this is John Hartley, our operations steward. He fashioned a backpack to get this generator up to the top of the mountain. We put in some hard barriers 
to limit access out to the top of the channels, which had received a lot of the graffiti impacts. People taking Southern Appalachian heath bald vegetation and throwing it down into the crevices, throwing rocks into the crevices with people below. It was, it was out of hand. So this was one of our strategies. Interpretive signage that we worked with our public communications office on. That summer of 2018, we removed the dilapidated fire tower watchman's cabin, which had become just a attractive nuisance. People were picking wood off of it and starting campfires. That area has recovered really nicely. We'll see that tomorrow. And then the COVID surge of spring 2020, that really kicked us into overdrive on we've, we've got to be not just reactive, but proactive in how we implement and manage public access at the channels. This was Saturday, March 27th, if I remember correctly, late March 2020. There were 72 cars parked over the crest of Clinch Mountain. Some of these vehicles are actually in the road, parked uh, all four tires on the pavement. They just left it and, you know, that, that particular day there were probably 500 people that visited the channels. The COVID outdoorsmen, I fondly called them. <laughs> I'm sure you all saw this at your places. So 2020, what did we do? We shut her down, we shut the place down, we contracted Jersey Barriers, closed the parking lot, you know, got the word out that the place was closed, and we took some action. We had a rash of social trails, like Ryan described at Buffalo Mountain. We installed a bunch of cabling, uh, similar in fashion to what they did at Buffalo, to restrict um, access and just to keep people's eye on, on the, the trail as it is. There's some more of that cabling. It was over a thousand feet of cabling, triple strand. We worked with VDOT, who up to this point had been reluctant to post no parking signs on the shoulder of the road. And then I think this surge in public access and negative impacts really got them on board with limiting parking along the road. But we couldn't ticket cars, and our law enforcement officer couldn't ticket vehicles if it wasn't posted no parking. And it wasn't our property, so we couldn't post it. So VDOT did that. We moved our kiosk redelineated the parking area. There's now a 10 car parking lot with numbered bumpers. In the future, and we've talked about this, how to implement, maybe you all have some examples from your sites we could talk about tomorrow in the future, possibly having a reservation system, but currently it's first come, first serve. If the parking lot's full, you have to come back at another time. But this site's really remote, it takes a long time to get there, so that message doesn't always go over really well, but it is what it is currently. So a lot of signage was produced with the new you know, rules uh, posted. Our law enforcement officer has ticketed vehicles up there. We haven't towed anybody yet, but that people are somewhat conscious of that. And uh, to date, we have been, done a good job of managing that 10 car limit. Look forward to visiting the site with you tomorrow.